Okay, thanks. Uh, as some of you know, before I came to the Richards Group, I worked at YNR in Switzerland. And while I was over in Europe, I saw uh, a lot of interesting ads. And I'd like to show some of them to you this morning. Uh, the big show over in Europe is the Eurobest. And we don't hear a lot about it over here because we don't get to enter it. Uh, but it's a pretty big deal over there. These are some that won gold at the most recent Eurobest. This is an ad for VW. Down at the bottom, it says, more late nights for us, less danger for you. So there's a bunch of uh, late, night takeout menu, or late night takeout boxes surrounding the moose. Now, this is from uh, DDB in Dusseldorf. Uh, this is another one um, for the unsymmetrical Nissan Cube. It says, symmetry sucks, for those who can't read below. This is one that says, uh, why waste energy? It's for LED technology bulbs. Now these, because they won gold at Eurobest, they're probably going to trickle down into Archive, or we might see them in the one show. But I want to show you a few that we're definitely not going to see over here. While I was in Switzerland, I worked on two different watch accounts. That's just what you do in Switzerland. <laughs> and interestingly enough, both clients said the exact same thing to me. They said, we make watches that are so beautiful, just put them on the posters, and everyone are go is going to want to buy them. The problem is there are tons of watch manufacturers in Switzerland, and they all do the same thing. They all just put these beautiful watches up on their posters and think that it's going to be differentiating, but it's not. Uh, they can try to go with the celebrity endorsements. It's always fun to see the celebrities sell out overseas. Um, if you can't afford a celebrity, you can go with a dead celebrity. Here's Napoleon. Um, the only one that I think is doing anything right is Patek Philippe. And this isn't a great ad, but I think they've got a great strategy. Down below it says, you never actually own a Patek Philippe. You merely look after it for the next generation. So they've got something strategic there, uh, which is better than any, anything anyone else is doing. Although these watches start at about 20 grand and can run you up to 200,000 grand. So a lot of people say, yeah. <laughs> Million so a lot, yeah. well, that's why a lot of people say you never actually own a Patek Philippe because you'll be making payments on it the rest of your life. Uh, here's George Clooney again. This man sells out in Europe. You'll see him everywhere. But at least this makes a little bit of sense. I mean, George Clooney selling the espresso, I can buy. Eva Longoria selling a Lusso fudge bar, not so sure I buy that. Um, this is an ad from, it's a political ad from the Swiss People's Party, also the uh, Democratic Union for the Center. They're a very racist, very xenophobic group, and uh, they own about, or they control about 50% of the government over there. So don't let the Swiss neutrality thing fool you. This ad says, for more security, we're going to have the white sheep kicking the black sheep out. This isn't a metaphor. If you know the Swiss People's Party, they're talking about the Africans and the Arabs. So the problem is, they've got a pretty good handle on clean design. This one says, open the doors to abuse, free circulation for Romanians and Bulgarians. No. So apparently Romanians and Bulgarians are giant birds that try to peck the country. While I was over there, they were instrumental in passing a law that forbade building any more minarets in Switzerland. Now, the interesting thing is uh, this poster has about twice as many minarets on it as they do in the entire country. It's not like they were going to just start building minarets like crazy. It's just what the Swiss People's Party does. Um, these are some ads for EasyJet, which is basically Europe's version of Southwest Airlines. And every ad for EasyJet is going to have three things. It's going to be orange, it's going to have a low fare, and it's going to have an icon that represents the country that's, or the, the destination that's being advertised. So here you have a Portuguese rug for a Lisbon flight. Here you have Thor's hat for Copenhagen. And these aren't necessarily award-winning ads, but they were ads that a lot of people would talk about and try to decipher and, and, and have a lot of fun with. I wouldn't have thought a sun hat for Nice would would be the first thing to go to, but it works pretty nice. I didn't know Toulouse had a good rugby team, but now I know. <laughs> These ads appeared in my neighborhood <laughs> one morning, and it was a little weird because there's no web address, there's no address, there's no call to action, it's just Ali Kebab is new in town. <laughs> And it was also kind of weird because these were everywhere. <laughs> these were everywhere in Geneva. And then they weren't just in Geneva. They were in Zurich. They were in Basel. They were in Bern. And they were making news. It was obviously some kind of teaser campaign after a week or so of this. And it was making you know, the news on the radio, on the TV. And everyone was talking about it, trying to figure out or guess what Ali Kebab was. And then after about two or three weeks, they rolled out these posters. It says 25 times in town. And the line below says, posters by SGA, the track to success. 
was incredibly disappointing. It's just a poster company saying, hey, advertise <laughs> with us and we'll grow your business. And so Ali Kebab went from this man of mystery everyone was talking about to a shill that everyone despised because he let him down. It was just a nice reminder that if you're going to tease anything, you've got to have a payoff. But then they kind of redeemed themselves when they rolled out these posters. Now Ali Kebab has a hotel, so apparently these are pretty successful. And then I forgave him when I saw this. I just thought Ali Kebab Airlines was great. <laughs> So let me just end on this. This is, this is actually in Brussels. This is a big uh, atom monument that they built in Brussels for a, a World Fair in 1951. And uh, it's, it's a big landmark there. So it was kind of interesting to see that they would put that on an M&M's uh, vending machine. Kind of interesting that they have M&M's vending machines. Um, this was in the Brussels airport. But the other big monument that they have in Brussels is this peeing boy. And I don't know why, but they put them on the t-shirts, they put them on the postcards, this is why people go to Brussels to see this thing, but I don't care how big a monument is, it doesn't belong on a Coke vending machine. Because <laughs> if I'm standing at the gate, I'll walk three gates down to use the, the, the fountain, because I don't want to taste the Coke side of Brussels. <laughs> Yeah.